afternoon, fr uh, friends. Steve Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Uh, this, of course, is starting on our Patreon channel. So, uh, Happy New Year's Eve to all of you out there that are on our Patreon channel. And, of course, those of you on our uh, YouTube channel, it'll already be after New Year's when you see this. Um, I just thought the image on the screen was kind of interesting. Uh, to say the least, uh, mainly because of what we're going to be speaking about today. No, not going to be talking about Planet X. <laughs> so, but uh, but it is it is interesting because this message is is probably going to be the most difficult message I've ever spoken about before, and um, and it's hard for people to grasp. Um, it's something that God revealed to me just recently, and I am really still trying to wrap my own head around this uh, in, in ways that, that you just can't even imagine. And it really kind of started like, a, you know, because I, I study ancient documents, and I was actually reading one that makes the, or actually I was listening to it, um, where it says, those who sow in winter reap in summer. And the winter is the world. The summer is the eternal realm. Um, when it goes on to say, let us sow in the world that we may reap in the summer or in the eternal realm. Which makes sense you sow in the world in other words we're 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 trying to reach and win souls for Christ that we may be gathered in an eternal kingdom right but this is the other part that really blew me away though but it says because of this it is fitting for us not to pray in the winter now you have to remember though Winter is the world. So you don't pray in the world. Now that might sound kind of confusing for a lot of people. Well, gosh, Brother Steve, if we don't pray, well, we're going to be in some big trouble. Well, it's not so much that. The thing is, is what this writer was trying to show you is that you are being spied upon when it comes to this reality, this flesh, this body that we live in. If you recall, Jesus told us to enter into our closet and pray in secret. Be not like, he said, don't be like the hypocrites. They go out there and make all their blast and boast about their prayers. He said, thinking they're going to be heard. He said, but when you pray, enter into your closet, close the door, and pray in secret. And your heavenly Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Remember that? Now, I did a message a little while back going into, about, uh, into this. And I took you to the Hebrew Matthew, because the Hebrew Matthew brings it out a little differently. Uh, says here, actually that's the wrong one I'm looking for. Hang on, this one here. When you pray, go to your couch or your bed. Close your doors upon you. In other words, your eyes. And pray to your Father in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So you, when you pray, do not multiply words as the heretics who think by the multitude of words that they will make them that will make them heard. Do you not see that your father who is in heaven knows your words before you ask from him? You see, when we pray. And I think this is what the, the author of that one document was trying to say. Pray not in winter. But remember, he said the winter is the world. The summer is the eternal realm. And we're going to begin to look at some other scriptures that uses these terminologies. And you might even understand finally, too, why Jesus actually worked on the Sabbath day. 
Hmm. Think about that, right? We are sons and daughters of the light. In a child of God where there is light, there is no darkness. If there is no darkness, then there can be what? There can be no Sabbath. You have to have a morning and an evening in order to have a day and a night, in order to have a Sabbath day, because it's from morning to evening. This is, I'm telling you, this is deep what I'm going get, to get you into here. But I want you to really prayerfully follow with me on this. All right, let's go back over here then to Matthew, for example. Matthew chapter 24. It's another place where we find that expression, winter. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. These are this part of the tribulation of things that are happening. That's why also, I, I have to admit to you, that that's why I felt like this picture is like, what, right? Really, it's fitting. Planet X, a judgment. There is a judgment coming on this whole entire system. We are in a demonic realm. We are in Satan's Eden. Do you think this is God's kingdom here on this earth? No. Jesus says, I go and prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. Let's look that one up. I, I talk about that a lot, and we always forget to, to, to actually quote it directly. You know, he says, prepare in a place. Let me just see. Yeah, John chapter 14. So let's just pull it up. This mine's always in John anyway. So we'll just go to chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Now notice what he says here. I didn't catch this before. I'm just now seeing this here myself. And if I go, I prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may also, may be also. <laughs> it's amazing. I think that has a lot to do with the resurrection. Just personally. I haven't had a chance to really look into that deeply yet, but just a, a thought there. All right. The point is, this is not where God's kingdom is. And by the way, in my father's house are many mansions, using that old uh, form of English. That's like a kingdom or a domain. All right? So just keep that in mind. Um, so uh, let's, let's move on here. I want to take and... Um, uh, one second... We come back over here to Matthew 24. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Now, granted, no doubt, we could take that as literally, he's talking about just, you know, you got, you got kids, last thing you want is to have winter time or on the Sabbath day because it's cold. Well, the Sabbath day... Why? Because you're not allowed to work or pick up anything? See, that kind of is a little bit awkward there because you have to remember when it comes to the Sabbath, Jesus was doing things on the Sabbath that was not considered lawful either. Remember, like for example, I'll give you one right here. I must work the work I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. 
Ooh. That'll make you think differently in a second here. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. What did I tell you a moment ago? If there's no darkness, there's no Sabbath. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. And the neighbors, therefore, they which had before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this uh, he that sat and begged? And some said, That is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. And by the way, he did all this on the Sabbath day. Right? Uh, another one right here, right? The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. He therefore uh, did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. You know, when you read verse 17... I would really like for that one to soak in deep for some people listening. That speaks to a, to a level and a depth that I guarantee you if 10,000 people watch this video this week, probably only five will get it. Put that one in the comments. Jesus, Jesus answered them, My Father works hitherto, and I work. His Father was working on the Sabbath. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Now, for those of you that like to argue, say, oh no, Jesus never broke the Sabbath and everything, you know, uh, he, he, he kept the law. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, John said he broke it. But said also that God is his father, making himself equal with God. Now he did break the Sabbath in a literal sense. But notice what Jesus said. Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You're in a carnal realm. That's why Jesus said, what was it? Where was it over here? I believe it was. Chapter 9. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. He was the light of the world. He still is the light of the world. If the light of Christ dwells within you, then there is no morning and evening. Now you might, uh, it might help better to understand when he says, in that one document that I was reading to you a moment ago, let me pull it back up so I can quote it just right here. Because of this, it is fitting for us not to pray in the winter. It is fitting not to pray on earth, but rather in secret. Now, you could pray out loud. Nothing wrong with that. That's not what he's even talking about when he says that. But there are certain things that need to be kept between you and God. Because that devil and his technological advances, they can pick up your thought. They can listen to you audibly. 
You could be praying secretly in your physical closet and they listen to you through the electrical wires in your house. The demons themselves could actually show up and listen in on your prayer time. But when you lay down and you close your eyes and you consciously enter in to the spirit, into the other realm, summer as he calls it, the eternal realm is what he calls it, then the devil can't hear anything. That's why Jesus says, enter into your closet, close your doors, pray in secret that your father who hears in secret may reward you openly. Now, I'm going slow with this. I'm going slow because I'm really wanting you to catch these things. By the way, too, when he spit on the ground and made the clay, uh, he did that two reasons. One, because they had this hygiene law thing law going on because of them being Pharisees, etc. You know, you couldn't touch this, can't do that. You know, you can't, you got to wash your hands, got to wash this, wash that and everything. So Jesus just went in and just spit on the ground, made some clay and put it on his eye. He wanted to make sure it was the most nastiest thing that they could ever think of. But then there was that other side. He could take from clay and form a man. Or in this case here, he could form the eyes that were not in the sockets of this man. Or, maybe he did have eyes. Maybe they were, who really knows what the reason for it was. I just thought it was kind of interesting that he does it with clay. Let's jump back over here to Matthew 24, though. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be short, and there should, be, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Hmm. Here, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, false prophets, shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if you shall say, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. You have to remember, Jesus spoke to the people in parables. And the Bible actually says, and without a parable spoke he not. I think that's the right way. Let me see. It's parable. I want you to understand this. There's a reason for this, okay? Let me, let me get this to the right place. Um... Let's see. For spake unto them parents because they sing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Okay. Uh, I spoke to them in prayer, saying, Behold, so are one. I think it's right here, Matthew 13. He said, in, in, Okay. And he said, let me make this big enough for you guys to see it at least. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it is not given. Um, that's not the one I'm looking for. But... Um, let me use put the word without in here because I believe that's how it's was written. 
Yeah, here it is. Matthew, yes, it is in Matthew chapter 13, but it's verse 34. Let's go further down. All right. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Okay, so we know that Jesus, when he speaks, he speaks in parables, and without a parable does he not speak. So if we're back over here in Matthew 24, you got to realize that this is also written in parables. So I find it fascinating. That's why I say really pay attention to what we're reading here. We find out there's going to be this great tribulation, right, that's coming upon the earth. Um... We had, and if you go so far back, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. I already exp expressed to you what that kingdom against kingdom is. The Pharisees were a kingdom themselves. Jesus said it would be torn from them and given to a nation, bringing forth fruit, meat for repentance. Wow. Think of that one. Think of the very expression there. Wow, <laughs> that's that's deep in itself for me even. Okay, so then he says, they ask him the question, will the kingdom be restored back to Israel? Jesus said, it's not for you to know the seasons nor the times. Well, the restoration of the kingdom was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. First to the house of Judah, then to the house of Israel, and then it was sent over to the Gentiles. There's your king, there's your nation that would receive the kingdom, uh, and it would be given to them, and they would bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. In other words, they weren't offering up animal sacrifices any longer. There again, that's just like the Sabbath. It is of a carnal realm. So, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall I hate, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's when the two kingdoms are rising against each other. So the Pharisaic kingdom comes back, which they're doing today. And now in the Middle East, you have the Orthodox community trying to rise up making sure using Netanyahu to be able to bring about this kingdom that they want in the Middle East. And they've risen up against the spiritual kingdom, those believers that know what the truth really is. But the reason they've risen up against them, not that the believers care about a physical kingdom on the earth, but because... When they speak the truth of what the truth really is about their kingdom, it hinders their ability to become dominant in the world once again. So there would be, the kingdom would rise up against kingdom. And yes, there would be famines. They create the famines. They create the pestilences. They can even make the earthquakes in different places on the earth. That's Satan in his kingdom trying to dominate the believers of their kingdom. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted. Why? Because they, they're sick and tired of you being in the way. They shall even kill you and they shall, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So those that truly are for Christ and his kingdom are hated. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Because the iniquity shall abound, and love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world for a witness to all nations. Then shall the end come. But then as we go down a little further... It goes on, then it says, I'll start with verse 16. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop come not down to take things out of his house. Neither let them which is in the field return to take his clothes. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. 
I can't help but think of when the writer of the one Egyptian document said, pray not in winter. He says, because of this, it is fitting for us not to pray in winter. In other words, not pray not on the earth. So I was looking at that, and I thought, well, does that actually fit? Remembering it is a parable, but pray you, but pray ye that your flight be not in winter. Okay, that your flight be not on the earth, maybe. Mm. Neither on the Sabbath. Is that because the darkness has returned? For then shall be great tribulation, such was not since the world to the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now here's where, I, this is why I get into the part about prayer, right? Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. And they go into all these different analogies. Well, if he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chamber. Believe it not. You ever notice with that other kingdom there, the Pharisee kingdom, they're really big into creating all these secret little chambers where they go and pray at. Pray not in winter. In this case, pray not that your flight is in winter. On the earth. You're going to be faced with a lot of these little secret places, right? Then you have Zechariah. Another one uses summer and winter that I thought was interesting. There shall be one day which shall be known as the Lord's. Not day and not night. But it shall come to pass that in the evening time there shall be light. This takes you right back to the Sabbath. This takes you right back to what's written when we were reading, what was it over here in uh, John? Therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. We also read over in John 2, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is what? Day! The night cometh when no man can work, but he must work while it is day, right? Not day and night, but it shall come to pass that in the evening time there shall be light. Jesus Christ is that light. And it shall come to pass in that day that the living water shall go out from Jerusalem. He was the living water. Half of them toward the eastern sea and half of them toward the western sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. Summer is the eternal realm. Winter is the earth. Je what did Jesus say in the prayer? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Sanctify your name, God. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done. So when his kingdom would come, that would be those saints filled with the Holy Spirit. Now when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, what is it? The light is in you. Jesus says you cannot put the candlelight under a bushel. But you set it on a candlestick so the whole house is given light. When the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you, you are what? The children of the light. Children of the darkness. 
Keep those things that are earthly. Mind those things that are of the law. Children of the light have eaten from the tree of life. In them there is no darkness. In them there is Christ that dwells within them. In them they cannot sin because they are in that light. You see, when the serpent come to Eve, and then of course Adam also enticed, it was to get them to stay and remain earthly. That knowledge of good and evil. And they partook of that fruit. And Satan's been busy ever since trying to keep people trapped in this life, in this world, in the darkness of this world. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are Sabbath keepers. And you'd tell me real quick, like, you know, well, God, he rests on the seventh day. That was the eternal. That's an eternal rest that was put in there. Jesus said what? My father works and I work hitherto. Like I said, think real deeply about that. That evening time there shall be light. And it shall come to pass in that day that the living water shall go forth from Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall the Lord be one and his name one. Uh, this, this is just, I don't know about you, but this just blesses me. In a depth that is very hard for me to try to even explain. In the book of Revelation, we read in chapter 22, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, nor the Lord God giveth, for the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. We read here in... Um, See, was it that one or was it this one? Let me just see. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this, right? Again, Jesus said to his disciples, As the lightning comes from the east and even is seen to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. We're still in Matthew chapter 24, by the way. I pulled this part up because it's more fitting in the way it's worded. If you're over here where we were at, you see, wherefore they say, shall say to you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Oh, wow. You ever, yeah, how many of y'all wondered about that one, right? I mean, I know I wondered for it for a long time. How about yourself, right? Long time? It's right there, Zechariah. Half of them toward the eastern sea, half of them toward the western sea. As the light comes out of the east and shines into the west. Even in summer and in winter shall it be. Christ lit up everything. He was the light. He is the word. He is everything. Okay, so going back to it, or let me jump back over here, right? Now, we get this here. For where, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So everybody thinks it's a great verse because it says eagles gathered together. And yet the entire time is talking about they're saying to you, if he's here, if he's there, don't believe it. Don't believe it. Why? Because it's a body of flesh. They keep trying to take you to a physical human body. That's why the Greek translation is, you can use eagles, okay, but in the Hebrew translation, it says, wherever the body is, there will be gathered the vultures. 
That's more fitting with what was said the entire time in that chapter. Look at that. Back up again. Then if they should say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness. Do not go out. Behold, he is in the chambers. Do not believe it. Behold, I tell you before it happens. Again, Jesus said to his disciples, As a lightning comes from the east and is seen into the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. He is the light of the world, the Holy Spirit that comes back upon you. That's why he goes on to say, wherever the body is, there will be gathered the vultures. Quit looking for something that's in the flesh. This is, see, I, I run across this a lot with people too, and, and God bless their hearts. I, I kind of get it. We're like fish in a bowl, right? You're trapped in this world, and so you kind of think it's the only thing you know. It's your only fish bowl you have, and so to, 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 to literally think about outside of this realm that there is eternal peace, if we can get away from this world, people just can't seem to wrap their mind around that. That's too difficult to go into your closet, to lay on your bed, close your eyes, and to get into a spiritual realm where you can go and meet with Jesus Christ face to face and pray to the, to the Father in secret. And really, when's the last time any of us have really done that? Not many. Oh, we got all kinds of sensations and everything else of the flesh. But I'm not talking about the flesh. I'm talking about going beyond the flesh. As he said, wherever the body is, that's where the vultures will be gathered. You want to get a physical body here? Okay. You want to pray like that? Okay, whatever. But the vultures do that. They come to wherever, wherever whatever is dead, that's where they're going to be. It's so rich and there's so much that can be said here. By faith he sojourned in, a land, in the land of promise as in a strange country, no less. He's in the land of promise, but he's still in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob. The heir is with him of the same promise. You know, those, that tabernacle or tents could have been their own bodies. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. See, notice that. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. It certainly wasn't Jerusalem. We read over here also, in Hebrews chapter 13, For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Right? No continuing city. Acts chapter 7. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have you not, your fathers not persecuted? And they have not, you know, and, and they have slain them, which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. That's powerful. Notice what he said. You stiff-necked, uncircumcised, and hardened ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. What you have need of is the Holy Spirit. The connection, what makes you one with God. Jesus said, In that day you will know that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. When? What day? That was the day of Pentecost. Where is your day of Pentecost? You know, I get, 
I get reports all the time. I'm, I've got this precious family right now that I'm, I'm praying for the right time to speak to their brother. That is tormented beyond belief and probably doesn't even know the depth of the torment. But I can tell you, what is this? It's the flesh. People are caught in this realm. They're, you're, you're stuck in this realm of the flesh and don't know how to get out of it. You do always resist, resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Stephen was trying to get them, I believe that's Stephen that's speaking here, maybe was, it could have been Paul, but trying to get them to understand they needed the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Who have received the law by the disposition of angels have not kept it. Yeah, I believe that was Stephen where they, because they killed him. Yep, yeah. yep, that was Stephen. I had one more aligned here, uh, John 14, and if I go in for, oh, I think we read this already, come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So, you know, friends, I, I don't even know if I have brought this out as significantly as I should have uh, for you. And, but I'll just, I'll keep praying about this to try to help to go deeper into these things. I, I was up, like I said, the other night, I didn't sleep. I was up, I slept three hours, got up. I had to go back and study on this. And, um, and I'm just totally blown away by it because I realized that let me just say this maybe in summary of the whole thing here. What, what are we really looking at? The whole purpose of this here is, is to recognize that everything that goes on on this earth in this realm, you know how they say that expression, someone's watching you? They are. Even if it's the, the demonic entities I'm actually, I want to come back to the full armor of God, by the way, too. There's something about the full armor of God I really want you to understand and know. But they are watching us. The thing is, is we've got to learn to really tap in by the Holy Spirit within us and wake up to who we really are. This whole thing about the Sabbath or the law or any of those things, those are minor issues. The whole gist of this is to recognize that we must walk in a realm with, with God, with the Father that is beyond this earthly realm. You know something that comes to my mind? I'm just going to say it. I don't know why I feel. I just feel to say this right here to you. You know, think about the Sabbath. You know, if you re, if you go back, we read in, in Genesis and God rested on the seventh day. What do you do with your prayers? How do we know that he's, he, you know, he's not in the seventh day right now and he's not going to hear your prayers anymore? That might help you with what I said to you at the beginning of this broadcast. And I'm not here to pick on uh, the Sabbath or people that want to keep the Sabbath. Listen, if you keep a physical Sabbath, nothing wrong with that. You go right ahead. You can do that. I'm not, not, not saying anything against it. Jesus broke it. John said he did. Plain and simple. He broke the Sabbath. But he was not bound by a carnal law. As he said... I must work while it is day. And as long as he was in the world, there was no night. So therefore, technically, there was no Sabbath. You understand how that works? 
The evening and the morning, it was the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day, right? Remember that in Genesis? But if the light is here, and we're going to a world where there is no darkness as well, as we read in uh, Revelation chapter 22, I think we just read that to you a second a year ago, right? Um, there shall be no light there. Excuse me, there shall be no night there. Sorry, not light. No night there, sorry. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Mm. As the scripture says, those that have entered into Christ have ceased from their works. And they have entered into his rest. That's the true rest. Entering into Christ. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Uh, and and Happy New Year to all of you. And, and if God lays upon your heart to help uh, support this work that we do, we certainly appreciate it. You see our, our email address above there, above my head there. Or at least our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Also, you'll see the one about uh, LifeWave.com forward slash Benoon. That also supports the broadcast, by the way, too, uh, because if you do decide to purchase the products for your own use, it does uh, help the ministry as well. Uh, not to mention the amazing results is beyond. Uh, I, I'm a, I am a true witness of how well that works. Uh, I just got totally, totally rebuilt digestive system. And I know I was on eight colon cleanse pills a day because my even the doctor said, overactive pancreas, gallbladder, stomach lining was gone, nothing could be done for me. Uh, you know, it, it was a very, very bad situation I was in. And uh, and I do believe in prayer. I do believe in God being able to heal 100%, nothing against that. And, and I had n didn't even use that patch thing there, the X39, thinking of that. Wasn't even thinking of that. And it's almost like it catches you off guard. And the next thing you know, boom, everything starts working again. And you're able to start eating normally again. And I don't have to take the medication any longer. That's what blew me away. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. And we'll talk to you soon.